Hi guys, welcome to our second Nidaria uh, discussion. What I want to do now is I want to talk about um, the different classes of Nidaria. So let, let's just kind of make sure we remember. I know we talked about this, but I want to just review for a second. R remember we had domain and then kingdom and then phylum and class and then if we kept that going we would say um, order family genus and species okay but we're going to talk about about mainly these and these because we're gonna we're gonna understand that all of the ones we're gonna talk about from now on are domain eukarya which means they have a nucleus and kingdom animalia so the animals so we talked about phylum periphera. We're now talking about phylum nidaria. And there are a group of classes under nidaria. There are the uh, hydrozoa. There are the scyphozoa. There's anthozoa. And there's a f relatively new one called Cubozoa. Hydrozoa, the, the common name for them are hydroids. Um, they're kind of a small, indistinct group. We'll get to those in a few minutes. They're, you don't see it. You don't, unless you're looking for them, they're, they're kind of small. The Scyphas, so these are hydroids. The Scyphozoa are the jellyfish. The true jellies. Ah, let me let me rewrite that because we want to say the true jellies. So the jelly, what we think of as jellyfish, are scyphozoa. The anthozoans are the corals and anemones. They also include a couple other things like the the gorgonians, the the sea fans. If you've ever heard of sea fans, we'll, we'll 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 talk about each one of these things in a couple of minutes. And then the cubozoa are the sea wasps. Those um, are really really interesting. They're also kind of scary because they can kill you in under two minutes, which is pretty amazing, especially seeing how some of them are really really small. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take each class and, and give you some, some information about each class. So we'll start with hydrozoa. Hydrozoa, I said, are the hydroids. Oh, come on. Are the hydroids. The, the dominant obvious stage is the polyp. When we think about hydroids, we think about polyps. Okay, they do usually have a medusa stage, but it's tiny um, and it's pretty quick. And so what most of us think of as hydrozoans, uh, hydra and obelia and those can are, are the are the polyp stage. We'll get there in a minute. Um, so there's a couple of examples that I want you to know about. Hydra is one. It's a freshwater um, critter. Obelia and hydractinia are marine. So let me show you what they look like. Um, this is this is a drawing of um, obelia. And one of the things you'll notice is that they have specialized polyps, and they're all together. They're colonial. Very often, um, hydroids are colonial. Um, so this one, oop, come on. This one here is a feeding polyp or defensive. So it has the stinging cells. Sometimes they're feeding and defensive, you know, separated. But but these are usually it's feeding and defensive. And then this these bulby looking things are the reproductive. Polyps. This is another reproductive. Okay. Um, okay. Oop. All right. So here's another one. 
um, Hydractinia Econata. I took this one in, in Waterford. Um, this, this is pretty interesting if you look. Um, I, I guess I can, well, let's do it. If, if you look right here, that's an eyeball of a hermit crab. This is a hermit crab shell that happens to be Pagurus, um, Polycaris. Nope, I'm sorry. Pagurus longicarpus. Um, but, but what I want you to see is this, this stuff, this fuzzy stuff all over it. It looks like fur. They call it snail fur. And the interesting thing is each one of these is a polyp. So see, this is a polyp right here. And this is another one here. And you can see another one here. There are all of these things are polyps. Okay. And they all live together. And this one is a reproductive. I don't know if I can write it in black. This is a reproductive polyp right here. See this, this one right here is a reproductive polyp. But so you can see that they're all connected. There's different kinds of polyps doing different things. Um, and, and they all live on a, a hermit crab shell. They don't usually live on the snail sh shell when the snail is alive. Once the hermit crab inhabits it, um, it's a really good example of mutualism. Okay, so Hydractinia econata is snail fur. Here's another one. Tubularia. Um, I took this one in Rhode Island, in, um, in Jamestown, Rhode Island. And I think it looks really flowery. I think it looks really cool. This is, this is Tubularia. Again, you can see there's a whole bunch of polyps. These are chitin shells. You may see these on the beach. Um, they wash up on the beach once in a while, the, the tubes that these guys are living in. I, I think they're really pretty. They're kind of tiny. They're probably that long. So they're not very big, um, but very pretty. Um, this is um, an interesting critter. This is uh, Millipora. This is, this is fire coral. Uh, I've been stung by fire coral, and I know why they call it fire coral. It really, really hurts. Um, but, but this is an example of a, of a Nidarian that makes a calcium carbonate skeleton. Now, Although they call it fire coral, it's a, it's not really a coral. It is a hydrozoan because it does have the a short uh, I don't want to say short a, a reduced medusa stage. Let me show you what it looks like when you get a little closer up. So so if I if I make this if I if I make this come on. If I make this box blow up to here, you can see, I think pretty clearly, that these are the individual polyps. They're not really big, but man, oh man, can they sting. They really, really hurt. But each one of these guys is called a zooid. I, I'm not going to expect you to remember that, but, but each of these is an individual polyp. They're all together. They form this, this skeleton together. Um, but, but yeah, you don't want to, if you see this stuff, if you go to the tropics and you see this stuff in the water, stay away. It really, really does hurt. And nobody heard me scream at 80 feet. I was trying to take a picture and yeah, I wasn't really paying attention and it came up and, and got me right across the side of the face and it left a welt for a couple of weeks. It was, it was, Pretty, it's pretty nasty stuff, but it's kind of neat. Okay, and it's not its fault that it stung me. Here's another really good example of a um, Nidarian. This is one that most people think of as a jellyfish, but it's not. This is the Portuguese man of war. This is um, a, a hydrozoan that um, is pretty common down in the tropics. Again, it can give you a pretty nasty sting, but it's really a, a, a colony. It's not really a jellyfish. So one individual polyp is this. Oop. One individual polyp is that. Uh, the other polyps hang below here. Uh, okay, didn't want to do it. The other polyps hang down below here. And so they're, they're a pretty nasty thing when you get stung by them. Okay, uh, moving along. Class Scyphozoa are the true jellyfish. They are um, their, their main stage when we think about Scyphozoa is the jellyfish, but they typically have a small um, reduced 
polyp stage that develops into like like I was showing you on this life cycle um, the, the 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 medusa so some of the common ones around here are the lion's mane sienna capillata I took that one in Rhode Island um, they're usually like maroon inside here I just thought that was kind of cool if you like if you like photography it's it's kind of neat um, let me show you what this is this is early in the spring this this one's kind of tiny it's probably the size of um, of your fist but interesting note these guys in in the northern Pacific can get up to 13 feet in diameter that's a big animal um, and and there look how far the tentacles trail behind it so you could imagine a 13 foot uh jellyfish with 100 to 125 foot tentacles behind it it's pretty pretty amazing um this is as it as it's pumping its bell to swim they are plankton because they can't really swim against the current but they do swim they stay up in the water column by swimming okay next class Anthozoa. Anthozoa are the corals and the and the um, anemones. There's in this case there's no Medusa stage, which is kind of important. So they don't have a Medusa stage. They're always polyp corals and anemones. Never are jellyfish type stage. Okay, always polyp. Uh, here's my examples. So here's a Telia anemone. I took this one. Believe it or not, in Rhode Island, I think they're really pretty. It was in between two rocks, and I happened to be lucky enough to have the camera and have, at the time, I had it, and it was film. So, um, yeah. But they're really pretty, way more common up north in Maine, northern Maine, um, and and clearer water, but I found this one in Rhode Island. Uh, here's one that's very common around here. This is Metridium senile. This one was huge. It was probably the biggest one I've ever seen, and... Um, they're they're really pretty. Um, this one was probably that big around, which is pretty big. Um, you know, this part is that big around, and it was probably you know that that far, uh, that that long. I thought it was pretty cool. Okay, here's um, another um, Nidarian. This is. Astrangia Donae. This is the star coral. This is the only hard coral that grows up here in New England. And interesting little note here. If you look at these little white dots, all these little white dots are batteries or groupings of stinging cells, of nematocysts. So, and, and this thing is probably, you know, as big around as that. So they're not very big. Um, and you wouldn't feel these if they stung you. Um, although they all have stinging cells, they don't all hurt because some of them aren't powerful enough to penetrate your skin. But I love this picture. And you could also see the mouth slash anus and you can see the tentacles and you can see how s this is a, this is definitely polyp. Okay. All right. Moving right along. This is one of my favorite pictures. This was down in Bonaire. This is the purple-tipped anemone, um, heteractus. And um, I just think it's a really... Sometimes you just have to appreciate things for their beauty. I think it's really pretty. Okay. Moving right along. Um, cubozoans are box-shaped. They're cube-shaped. They do have an alternation of generations. Um, they're usually pretty strong swimmers. Um, the one that I saw that I show you, I'm going to show you pictures of. Um, I took pictures of it in Bonaire. It's it's the Bonairean sea wasp, Tamoya oboya, and they say that if it stings you, it's anywhere from extremely painful to fatal. Um, so they're pretty interesting critters. You might have heard of the the Australian sea wasp, the uh, or you might have heard of Irokanji maybe um they're really deadly um so let me they can swim um a meter three feet a little over three feet in five to ten seconds it's they swim pretty strongly uh they have well-developed eyes which is kind of weird um they are um pretty dangerous but 
very cool. Um, Chiron X Fleckeri is one of the best known ones. It's about the size of your head. Um, it has tentacles up to about 10 feet behind it. Um, a big sting from this guy can kill you with within two or three minutes. And it's painful. It, it's, it's very painful. Um, if you've ever seen those world's deadliest shows, this is usually one that's on it. Um, this, the Australian box jelly or, or, or sea wasp. Um, it looks like this. Um, looks like that in the water. I, these are not my pictures. I did not take these pictures. But um, this, and I didn't take this either, but this, this person died. If you get much more than um, a, a, about, let's see if I can do this. If you get much more than about this one sting from Chironex, you're pretty much a goner. Um, it, you can see that this person was not quite dead yet, but he did die. Um, it's, it's very painful and it certainly leaves its mark. Okay. Um, Tamoya Oboya is the one that I got pictures of. They're about, um, they're about, well, about this big and probably 10 inches in length with the tentacles and everything. Um, there's one tentacle on the corner of each bell. They pretty much stay in the deep water during the daytime because they, they like it darker. And at night they come up to feed. Um, I, yeah, I, I was over the, the house reef where we were staying and I saw them and I just, I kind of chased them. Um, like I said, they're extremely painful to fatal. I'm not as crazy as you would think. I, I know what I'm doing and I was very careful. So, uh, but here's what it looks like, and you can see um, this. This is the box shape, okay? And then it had a tentacle on each corner. Um, this is the it, it, very interesting. This this was a membrane that would pulse in and out as it swam. Um, and these four tentacles are really really nasty. You don't want to touch them. I did not. I was very careful. Um, this is this is a really good picture of it. This is Tamoya oboya, the Bonaran sea wasp. Very cool, very pretty. Um, this was probably taken at about two o'clock in the morning when I was diving. When when I go diving, it's like you know if you if you're gonna go, you you can you can eat at home, you can sleep at home, you can't really dive like this at home. So I want to do as much as I can. So um, yeah, that's Tamoya oboya. So I hope you enjoyed the, the slideshow. Um, I will um, I will be putting up the rest. Thanks guys.